I'm trying to look for some tunes. Hang on a second. About a bit of Donovan. Yeah. Hmm? Bit of Donovan. Okay, nice. We're good. Heaps of people joining. It's we dropped <laughs> Someone's Shannon. oiled up and ready to go. It's because we dropped Shannon Kitchen. Isn't it? JOFM. I still wow. haven't gone to see. What's your name? It's here again. Everyone's here. Got a couple coming in. Darren Foster, welcome to Instagram today. Hello, Darren. <laughs> How are you, mate? I'm glad that you uh, got that sorted out, eh? Welcome to the live time demo, your first one. You'll be back, most of us. <laughs> if you're lucky. If you're lucky. You might not, might not, might not like what I say. But anyway. uh, once again, I'm. Um... <laughs> if you've seen this before, I've always run it a little bit late. But anyway, it's all good. We'll let the. Um... Let the people join in for a minute or two. So, time for a quick coffee. Happy Easter, everyone. Hopefully you had a great day. I was on time surf candies today and building fly tying kits, eh? Wow. It's good. <laughs> ISO. <laughs> How good is it? Hopefully you didn't eat too much chocolate. Oh, I did. You know that there's um I'll smash my rabbit. You know there's bunnies out there just just with their ears gone. Or maybe just the feet left. I don't know. Cool. Anyway. I think there's a bit of a crowd there. Who else we got? Darren. Yeah, is Shannon there? <laughs> Hello, Shannon. I might have I just... missed I might have missed Shannon. I might have been looking the other way. I just got off the phone to you, Shannon, so hopefully you're there. You said are hey, you right? I said Shannon's there. I'm putting my slippers on, so yeah, we're right. <laughs> now my feet are getting hot. Anyway, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, if you hear any little coughing in the background, that's just Cherie. Choking on my chocolate. Don't worry, she hasn't got COVID. <clears throat> so um, tonight, we're going to tie Shannon Kitchener's SK prawn. Well, we're see. just trying to get a focus on that. Complete with uh, treble, and at the other end, complete with swivel. If you can see inside of there, all right. Mm, Maybe not. No. Darren, you haven't seen us before, so it's it's a bit <laughs> amateur, and there's a fair few technical difficulties that we experience. So bear with us. But anyway, that's the fly. And tonight we're going to do something different. I'm going to run through the fly in the usual step by step. Uh, process and talk through my build explanation um, but then we're gonna ask Shannon to join in and then you guys can ask Shannon some questions direct um, about the fly about the concept about fishing the fly those sorts of things so this is this is Shannon's pattern um, I don't hide that at all uh, Shannon and I have been friends for a long time I don't know how many years, 30, 35, I'm not sure. But, um, and we talk a lot, you know, a few times a week, which is really good. And I'm really, really privileged to be able to tie some of Shannon's creations and put them in part of it, put them in part of our range. So Shannon really needs no introduction. Most people would know who he is, if not everyone. Uh, as soon as we dropped your name today, Shan, the message is just out of control. <laughs> New Instagram account signed up. <laughs> YouTube followers, everything. Just went wild. Just went wild. That's why I'm running late. I think I got to everyone, so hopefully you could all make it. But anyway, that's that little fly. So the equipment that we're going to need tonight. Um, in terms of materials, you will need some 3 mil foam, just like so. Tan makes a good colour, and I know Shane uses tan a lot. You'll need some legs to match it, something like that. Those little sand barred silly legs are absolutely ideal. 
and we'll tie a tan one. Now, even though I just showed you a green one, so we're going to tie a tan one. You'll need some 35 mil, 35 mil flyman shanks. All right. So that's the that's the one to tie them on. You'll need some easy shrimp eyes. So for the tan, picked up the wrong colour. For the tan, I'm going to tie a hot orange. But like like all of them, you can put whatever colour on there that you want. For the body, we're going to wrap it in flat diamond braid and then coat it in some resin. Okay. Which that's my resin. Cracked open a new bottle today. For the mouth parts, we're going to use some Steve Farrah blend. Farrah. Farrah. Really nice stuff. Just got a little bit of um, angel hair mixed through it. So it's, but it's basically slink, slinky fibre with angel hair mixed through it. Okay. So it's got that nice, that nice little wavy effect, translucent effect. You will need some three mil Lumo tube, just like this stuff. That's going to hold the treble in place. And speaking of trebles, I don't have a brand new packet, so I'm down to my last one. I have to go to the shops tomorrow. Um, that is an owner ST36BC in the size 14. All right, seems to be an ideal match. So we don't sell that sort of thing, but you can pick that up from your local BCF store, okay? Uh, the equipment, some scissors, your bob, bobbin with some 210 two denier thread and some little uh, pliers. They're just a tiny little pair of Leathermans. And you'll need uh, some swivels. So these are just, uh, you might be able to see those in there, just tiny little barrel swivels. Mm, yep. the, the smaller you can get, the better. All right? So we will start. Let me just get this. Comfy, cozy. Okay, we're good to go. So we're gonna put the put the shank inside of the inside of the vice. I may need to adjust this a little bit as we go, guys, just to um, just to make it make it work. But anyway, I'm just gonna put a wrap of thread down here. Not too much. One or two, one or two, maybe three or four layers. It's a really good fly for brim and whiting. Um, if you're wondering what it's about. So we're, we're continuing on with the top water theme. Okay. So the other day was Cherie's Purple Popper. And there's been some great, some great tying of that that I've seen on the socials over yeah. the last couple of days. Been awesome. Can't wait to see all the fish being caught on them in the spring and the summer. Okay, from there, we're gonna slide our swivel on to the shank. Okay, so through the open loop down here. And put that back into place like so. Now what we wanna do, the reason why you don't put too much thread on the start there is so you can get that loop of that swivel bound onto the shank, okay? And I know that a few people will ask about the swivel the swivel, and the treble a little bit later, so. Mm, it's blurry. Once, um, once we're at the, at the end of this step-by-step, step, then we'll bring Shannon in and, uh, and you can ask him some questions. Hang on. Are we good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'm doing here is binding this swivel in, all right? So you can see I've, co I've covered up that whole bottom loop with a, with, actually with a fair amount of thread, okay? And you want that in there so it's nice and tight. You could, if you wanted to, you could put a bit of super glue in there in amongst your binds, or you could put on a little, you know, a little dollop of uh, UV resin. I'll leave it as it is for the time being. And we're going to advance our thread back up to the start of the opening of the hook, of the shank. We're going to cover all of that thread down, just like so. Now, guys, what you don't want to do is you don't want to 
cover up or close off this gap here. That's got to, that's got to stay open. Okay, so your thread work has to finish half a mil from there. All right, so that we need to put the treble in as the last step. So it's got to slide through that gap. So just be careful with that when you're tying your fly all the way through. You don't want to get to the end and uh, and you've closed it off. You've closed that gap off by mistake. So from here, we're just going to grab a clump of Steve Farrow blend just to formulate the part of the head. Pull out the excessively, the excessively long pieces, just so it's got a bit of a bit of a taper there. We're going to tie that in on top of that hook shank with a few, with a few fairly firm wraps. Okay. If you've got any questions about the tying process, excuse me. Feel free to um, to shoot them through, and I will answer them as I go. Okay. Now we're just going to tidy these little butt sections up, just with your scissors, and maybe get rid of a couple of the excessively long little stragglers on the top there. Now from there, I'm going to put on a set of easy shrimp eyes. So we'll just use the hot orange or the fluo orange for the purpose of the demo. Give them a little bit of a spread apart. And we're gonna line up the junction with the threads, okay? Now I've explained these before, but they're a platform-based eye. So there's a set of ridges on them that your thread just binds into. And if you don't if you don't bind your thread too far, you'll end up with a nice set of even eyes every single time. And as the name suggests, they are by far the, the easiest way to make or to put eyes on your flies. Okay. Can't see that. Yeah. Okay. Stop spinning it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> stop spinning. Been told stop spinning the floor. And then just above that. We're going to put in just another tiny little clump of farrow. All right. And a couple of the fibers just slightly longer than the bottom, than the bottom bunch. Okay. Just like so. Bind them down and back up to here. Make sure you're happy with that. We'll get rid of that little that little one there and we'll get rid of a couple of those ones just here like so so hopefully you can see that guys now on this fly we just use one leg on each side so we'll go and get some silly barred legs all right so this is the sand color and it's clear with a brown bar and then with a gold flick through it so we're going to put we're going to position the leg on the halfway point of the thread work and bind it firm but not overly tight to where your thread ends. Now I bring my thread back, wrap my leg over the top, lock it in place and then bind it into position like so. Okay. And you should be able to see that the legs will We'll dangle down down here. We'll trim them up in a little bit. From there, we're going to take a piece of three mil foam. Okay, it's approximately 10 mils wide and about 70 mil long, I suppose, maybe 60. All right, just like so. We're gonna cut that into a little chisel point. Like that, just knock, knock the corners off each side. The point doesn't have to be super perfect because you're, we're going to bind that down and cover it all over with thread. Now you'll see that we've got the wider part of the foam just there. And I like to position that right at the end of my threads. Okay. And we're going to bind in that little point. And then we're going to wrap it fairly tight. 
back to the opening of the hook shank and bind it all down, bind it all down nice and tight. All right. So you should be able to see with that thread work that I've now completely compressed that foam underneath all of that thread. And we have a little bit of a, a tapered body and that sort of thing. Not super important to be brutally honest, but I think it helps in the next step. So we still have a relatively even taper for applying the body braid. Okay, any questions going on there? <laughs> I'm not last one. I don't think so. No. Okay, so this is body braid. If you haven't seen it before, it's flat. All right, it is the best gear for um for making bodies on your flies. I use it on all of the gotchas. I use it on my surf candies. I use it on this on this fly here, the SK prawn. And what I like about it is that the resin takes to it really, really well, and you don't end up with a lumpy, bumpy uh, fly body. So we're just gonna tap that in and take those threads to the back of the foam, just like so, all right? From there, we're gonna go all the way forward, down to the base of the loop of the swivel. Now, if you have a look at the swivel, you'll see that I've tied it in on an approximate 40, 45 degree angle, okay? Taryn wants to know if you missed the clicking noise in your right ear. <laughs> Darren, I actually look forward to that again shortly. So for those of you who don't know Darren, Darren's the president of the Hunter Valley Fly Fishing Club. It's a club that, uh, that Sheree and I are both active members in. And they're a great bunch of people who we do some work with, with our tying days up there at Maitland. So, and Darren's the coordinator of all of that for us. And we, we really value that, Darren, like we really do. You know that, we've, we've spoken about that in the past. But the guys, um, the guys are a great bunch of people. People travel up from Sydney. And for those that, of you that don't know, Sydney to Maitland is about, two and a half hours or two hours and the guys come up and we're in a classroom environment and we do what we're doing here but you know instead of being across a live feed we're doing it in person with a group of up to i think 25 yeah, i think 25 last time was the is the kind of class numbers that we get or up to 25 i should say so Darren, thank you, mate. We really appreciate it. I look forward to catching up with a fish with you um, up there on that famous lake. But anyway, the next step that we're doing now is just covering the body with some UV resin in the thin variety. Now with the thin, you might be able to see that that will actually soak into the diamond or into the diamond braid, which is what we want because it helps the, helps give the pearl more of a tan pearl kind of, um, kind of appearance. And we're just going to set that underneath it there. Sheree was giving me the wind it up. Oh, I must've been jibbering. <laughs> must've been, <laughs> must've been jibbering too much guys. Okay. Then from here. We're going to fold the foam back over on itself. And I, you can see my uh, thumb and finger working there to squeeze it around that body that I've just resined. Then I'm taking a couple of wraps over the top of that three mil foam. All right. And getting progressively tighter as I go. Maybe a couple in front there just to lock it in. All right, so you should be able to see that. Got it tied in there nice and tight. Then from there, I'm going to push that foam to make a little, uh, make a little uh, popper face, I suppose. And then when I'm happy with it, or a little gurgler type face, 
When I'm happy with it, I'm going to bind over in that same position. All right. You can, if you trap any foam down, you can sort of push it and massage it just a little bit, just so you can pop the edges out nice and straight. And then from there, we're going to finish that. Okay, right through the big section, just like so. And then another one. You don't glue the body down? No, I don't glue the body down. The body stays just there. Uh, the thread, the thread, and every, the thread work and the resin tend to hold it all in place. And then what we have here is I can never find my bobkin. Anyway, what we have here is still some exposed thread that we're going to cover up now with resin and get it to sit right up in that little channel just up there. Okay, here we go. I can't wait for my loon bodkin to arrive so I can actually find it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, hopefully here this week, I, I'm hoping. We're just going to dab that. Not too much. You should be able to see how much I'm using and it's, it's really not a great deal, guys. All right. And then with your bulk and just push that right into the little corners of all of that exposed thread. And once you're ready, you can set that in place. Now I know on the original um, fly that Shan did, um, he really, he didn't bother with, uh, I suppose with this whole step just here, okay? Um, on Shan's version, it's uh, thread, and then a bit of UV over the top of it just to protect the thread work. Um, we spoke a fair bit about it over time and decided that this is probably the best option to take to give the fly just a little bit more durability and just give it that subtle amount of light reflection from underneath. Okay, so that's, that's nice and set. And then you should be able to see those easy stream bars just popping, just popping away. But we've still got to trim the top. Okay. So I take this out of the vise. Take it out of the vise. And then with my scissors, I put it, put the scissor blades in as far back as I can and give it one, one neat cut straight across. Okay. So you should be able to see that that's a pretty neat um, cut across there. And then if you look at the fly from that side, you'll be able to see that the shank eye and the swivel is all nice and aligned, okay? And they're the things that you want to look for. So before you do your final resin work of those threads, you can just make sure that that doesn't move or, you, or it's all squared up before you do the final coating of resin, all right? So we'll go up the front here, going to trim our legs. Just nice and even. And then, then, and then for this part, which is attaching the, uh, which is attaching the treble, but that's not too bad. All right. This is where your three mil, three mil bait tube or Lumo tube comes into play. Okay. Now I'm just going to cut a tiny little section off, maybe about maybe about five mils long, approximately. Okay, I'll cut it just a bit longer. And then I'll just, I'll just clean up the edge from the other end. All right. Just confirming I haven't uh, locked in, the, <laughs> haven't closed up the thread of my shank. I closed up the, the shank with my thread. Now from there, I'm just gonna slide that three mil bait tube over the treble eye and down onto the shank, okay? From there, we slide that. Just like so, we just slide it in here. There you go, okay? So you end up with your treble out on the front and that Lumo tube needs to be pulled over the 
shank loop so it rests down on the flat down in here. Now this is where I use my pliers just because I prefer to just because I prefer to hold the treble with my pliers and thumb and forefinger and start to massage that tube over that loop. It sometimes will take a couple little goes. It's um it's not it's not the easiest process, but you want this tube to be nice and firm down there so that the treble um, doesn't come out. And the beauty about this is that if your treble gets blunt or something like that, you can always replace it. And then We'll just give our little materials a bit of a, a bit of a clean up there. They get a bit punished in that last section. That's why I use good quality materials, guys, to tell you the truth, you know, particularly on this floor. And then there we have it. I'm gonna go searching for Shan. Okay, so we're gonna try and bring Shan in, okay? So Sharif's gonna go searching for Shan in the list of people. And then that really is the finished fly, guys. So got him. There we go. So that's the top profile that you can see. You can see the treble down here. There's the side profile with that little shrimpy looking head and a nice set of attractor eyes. A couple of legs. Not too many. You don't need too many on this fly. And then under the body, you've got your braid. Uh, body braid that's coated in UV resin, 35 mil shank, and then your little swivel on the front. It takes it takes a little bit to tie that fly, but hopefully I've showed you the right way to tie up. Showed you the right way to tie it, but hopefully you understand that. And we'll get this one onto our YouTube channel as well. But um, anyway, Shan, there now. Yeah, he's yeah, ready. He's, how you going, bro? Hi, Shan. How are you, mate? Yeah, good, bud. Good. You're tired. I think you always think it's about... neater than I do. <laughs> You're pretty neat, aren't you? I am pretty neat. <laughs> Thanks. I, I do like to tie a neat fly. Yeah. Anyway, I think there's about 4 million people watching, Shan, so they're all yours. <laughs> Hi, guys. He's all gone. Um, good. Yeah. So the reason I, I uh, invented this fly, I fish a lot with uh, people using conventional tackle. So there we're whiting fishing and brim fishing. And I found that the lures they were using were just little splashes along. Um, and you can get it out of gurglers and things like that. But I wasn't getting the, the hookup rate the same. So what, what I ended up doing, I started tying them on, um, on shanks of hooks, cut the cut the um, actual hook off, and then having some stinger hooks, and then that wasn't too bad, but it wasn't good enough. So as soon as those um, shanks come out, that's when I started to um, utilize that and put the treble on it. Um, a lot of people kind of say about you know why why treble and and that, but. Tube flies, tube flies have been around for a long time for salmon. They use um, doubles and trebles. Um, so I have no, um, I'm not that purist to, to go down to that nitty gritty. The swivel on the front was uh, utilised because we're going down really light with the leader. Um, it spins a lot. That, that front popper face at, acts like a little propeller and it spins as you cast. So I was getting a lot of, twisting in the leader so to eliminate that that's why i put that swivel at the front and that actually works quite well so that's the reason for that but what, um, size, what size leader were you using shan like down to what down to no, six no four? i was going to four. Four. there you yeah, go uh, because in the in the first couple of years of trying to catch whiting consistently um they seem to be very spooky on the line hitting the water where sure. else 
I was fishing in really, really crystal clear water. Um, yeah. A lot of really still water as well. So yeah. I had to go down that light. Lately, yeah. I've found some different, well, over the last couple of years, I've found different banks and that holding it. And I've probably changed my style of fishing for them a little bit. So you can go up to that six, eight, even 10 pound um, yeah. where yeah. They're, not, um, they're not as spooky on it. But yeah. Um, yeah. The, way, the main way that I try and fish the fly, I fish it in a lot of running water. So those yeah. those systems where there's big sand flats in the middle of a, a river, incoming, outgoing. Outgoing is yeah. my, my favourite. But I cast it out kind of on an angle upstream and let the current swing the fly as well. And that's why I guess with that, heavier leader i can get away with it it's more reaction bite and as it's going yeah. i'm just doing nice little um twitches which is making it skip like a prawn so if anyone's seen a prawn skip in the water that's what you're yeah. basically just kind of trying to do yeah nice nice it's certainly caught some fish mate i got a message today from somebody who so that this fly was the, the fly that they used to get their first whiting on flies. And that's a that's an achievement, mate. That's, that's very, very good. It's um, very cool yeah. to hear. Yeah, and I guess that's that's a cool part of, um, yeah, and that's thanks for you guys who put me uh, on for this. I, I really like um, helping people out. I like to, um, I don't have many secrets. Um, and the secrets I have are only secrets until I get it to all perfection and then I'll pass yeah. it on to everyone else. And, mate, if we if we do everything like you guys are doing, helping everyone out is excellent. So um, to hear someone catching their first brim or whiting is really, really cool. It's it's yeah. really important to grow our our, um, our sport and industry and mm. having that, yeah. that helping hand is always always um, a big bonus. Mm. And Especially you know, yeah, that species. You know? Especially that species, mate. That's not an easy feat by any stretch of the imagination, you know. So wait until the yeah. fly gets done. No, no, we're, no, we're talking. <laughs> uh, no, we're talking. Yeah, we're talking the whiting, right, on fly. So yeah, wait for the mesmerizer. It's coming. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's he come, great... He's coming back next Sunday night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've been working on a few whiting flies, and um, we're consistently get getting um, fish now, which is really, really good. Um, no, so but yeah. it's the whole thing of evolution and yeah if anyone else has any ideas or any um upgrading of flies or anything like that yeah, yeah don like yeah reach out and have a bit of a yarn yeah. i love to hear people's um stories that's what it's about mate yeah, yeah so uh, dead drift just dead drift dylan just asked about uh he heavier tippet for australia to fly yeah it does definitely does um that kind of 10 to 12 pound you can I've, I've been probably using a little bit more now. I've got a couple of other little uh, surface flies that I've been using quite a bit of late. And that heavy leader definitely does um, make the fly track a lot straighter, So, which is yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. From um, my perspective, I would fish a heavier leader. Like, yeah. that's just, but that's me, Shane. Like, I do fish heavier than probably what most do, you know. So, and I, I know I'm okay with that. But yeah. But if you, can get, was, if you can get away with light, it goes as light as you can. Yeah, I guess it was just those earlier stages where we were just developing catching whiting on fly mm. yeah, on a yeah. consistent level. I've, I know a lot of people have caught them on fly, on fly before, but yeah. to get them consistently where I'm comfortably go out and get a dozen whiting on fly. Mm -hmm. now. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Once, once you've cast that fly out, Shane, what... Are you doing like a long strip slow or are you doing like a frantic sort of popping? What, what's your retrieve? So I will, it, basically what a prawn looks like skipping through the water. So if everyone's mm -hmm. seen a prawn, you, you kind of mix it up. You want, want it to get the attention of the fish. Um, if you're doing a cross cast and letting the current swing with it, you're just doing little skips so it's, the drag of the fly will act as a V anyway. So fish will mm -hmm. look at it and you see that little skip and mm -hmm. that skip usually is them trying to get away from predatory fish. So yeah. that's when other fish get excited and that's the reaction bite that you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with that, yeah, just little, um, like 
if it's a swing cast, yeah, just little plops, uh, little pops, and uh -huh. let it swing a little bit more, then pop again. If it's uh -huh. a direct fly, uh, direct cast into say uh, along an edge or something like that, uh -huh. I'll have it a little bit more erratic. I might pause it a little bit, but then I'll I'll fasten it up to kind of get that reaction bite because you you want their attention. But to get a fish's attention is one thing, but to get them to bite is another. So those yeah. little erratic ones are really, really important. Yeah. Um, yeah. Darren Foster's asked, um, do you find better hookup rate with the trebles? Of course you do. Um, they're a small little treble. Um, and the way that whiting and brim feed, they kind of come up and suck at the back of it. So that's why it's a really perfect position where that hook is and that's where stinger hooks will still work as well and i know brett uses stinger hooks quite a bit yeah. um and i on my new oh, style of fly um, I've been using, um quite a bit as well but yeah if you have the hook on the belly the fish don't seem to hit the belly as much they're always hitting that end of the prawn I yeah. Find. yeah and even with yeah. tackle, all my mates who use yeah. sugar pens or um, ebby prawns and things like that, all yeah. those fishing on those rear stinger hooks. So that's yeah. why I kind of, that those trebles were perfect at that time. Uh, yeah. 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 I think I was chatting to someone about this the other day, mate, about the retrieval whiting, you know, and, you know, I, I try and keep mine at a pretty steady pace with, you know, like what you said, a couple of quick twitches mixed up in between. Yeah. But I sort of put it, I sort of explained it was, you know, I think whiting are, are an erratic fish. You know, yeah. they're not really, they're not built for eating off the top as much as they do, you know. Yeah. They're really built for nose down yeah. foraging, but they love a top water presentation. So it's got to be in their, it's in their makeup to, to eat fish off the top. Yeah. So the way that I explained it was that I prefer a short leader, um, you know, somewhere around two to three feet, I suppose, roughly. With a, with a relatively consistent retrieve, you know, because what you've got underneath is a fish that's out of control, you know, out yeah. of control trying to eat the fly, you know, darting backwards and forwards and trying to nip at it and that sort of thing. And I find that that consistent retrieve in line, so to speak, with a couple of quick retrieves, I find that my hookup rate is a, is, is a much higher rate, more successful. Than having yeah. an out of control stripping a fly way too fast and it's bouncing across the top of the water so to speak so you've got an out of control fly and an out of control fish yeah. you know and then and they rarely do they meet yeah. you know yeah. if you've got a, if you've got a consistent a consistent retrieve with it you know in line and still an out of control fish the point and the and the hooks or the point of the hook and the fish at some point are going to meet you know but you've got to you got to fish that fly, you know, understand what's happening behind the fly, the swirls, where the fish is at, fish that fly for it to commit to then not nipping it but charging it down and engulfing it. Yeah, and getting that bite. Um, Shannon Hodges, yeah. Shenny Hodges, uh, just wrote, can you upscale the fly pattern? Yeah, I've done some big, big barrow ones um, and they actually do nice. work quite well um, nice. where you – you just upscale the um, uh, what's uh, uh, a shanksy? What's, what's the shank? One? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the next one. Actually, I got a message about this today. Could and somebody asked, could you tie them on a fifty-five mil shank? And I, I think absolutely you can. You definitely you know? can. I, I everything, have got everything like, just goes up in proportion. Yeah, and you do get on the bigger whiting. You do get a better bite on those bigger ones. They like there those bigger prawns. So, yeah, Thank most you definitely you can. Nice. Shen, um, there's, a, um, there's a good question there about the colour of the foam and whether you think it's important. Do you? I know everyone's got different opinions on, you know, what colours to be casting. What, how do you feel about the colour? Um, yeah, the colour's not as important as the action um, uh -huh. and getting the bite. A good contrasting colour's really good. So, say if I'm fishing... Um, leaf litter and the leaf litter is brown, I generally will use uh -huh. a green fly or a pink fly uh -huh. just to have yeah. a do a little bit different contrast. But yeah. that tan colour is probably the number number one that I always turn to 
mm-hmm. then the colored flies, I just go to something different. Um, if I need it for, um, contrasting yeah, in the color. Um, I sometimes put a little bit of an orange dab on the bottom as well, mm-hmm. just as a bit of, um, but that UV, I think Loon comes with the UV, um, colors. Mm, um, it does. So all the other, yeah. all the other great, um, UV glue places. I'm just going to plug my, um, my thing. Char- and charger in. Charger <laughs> Raids up to a nice range of uh, UV two UV resins as well, mate. Yeah, I've yeah. Throw, I've got to throw that one in. Yeah, yeah. I any any UV, but yeah. So that they're just little trigger points that I find that um, work not too bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can tie a rattle in as well. Um, the glass ones aren't as good. Just like that. Are oh, you got a rattle? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so yes, definitely. But sometimes the fish don't like the rattle as much. Yeah. Um, but I, I definitely do have um, rattles. But yeah. I know Brett sells the, the plastic rattles. Mm. So yeah. I wouldn't use a glass one. And that's why the other good reason why the um, those flies work well, as Brett said, if you, if you, because they really like gauge hooks, they do sometimes get blunt really easy or they rust out or a brim might snap it in half. Um, mm. So to change it over, so you want a fly that's very durable. So the I'll definitely use plastic rattles instead of glass. Mm. Yeah. Duckling yeah. casting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> definitely, Aaron. I definitely would duck when casting if you um. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. You learn to do the belt and cast a lot. So the yeah. belt and cast. Um, I know Clinton Isaac's got a couple of good videos on that on his website. Um, that momentum cast is really important and always have the wind blowing over your shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> or take your flies. Yeah. Yeah, or take your flies. That's exactly yeah, right. Take your flies. The fish's mouth. Um, yeah, it all depends with, with the how, less damage to a fish's mouth with a stinger over treble. Mate, sometimes those stingers um, can get a bit messy you'll usually get one in the mouth or maybe two, but then that yeah. other one swings around. I find that they yeah. swing around their eyes a lot as well. Yeah. So it's a 50, 50. Yeah. 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 It's I, definitely- I, agree. I agree with you there, Shannon. I think I've spoken about stingers on here before, and I think they need to be really short, you know, not yeah. ones that are, not ones yeah. that are way too long. They're the ones that are, yeah. that tend so, to be out of control. So yeah. if you're doing that, Definitely have to be. Yeah. I'll do a fly one day with stingers on it. Maybe a disco with assists or something like that, but down the track, I suppose. So Yeah. So if you are upscaling, would you tie the shank close? If no, nah, not really. Um so tying that shank closed, you, you can tie it close and you can put a um a treble on, on uh, a split ring. on a split ring if you really wanted to. Yeah. But if if you have once you tie it up, you can see that that Lumo tube holds that on pretty tight. A big fish would have to really rip it apart to to pull the yeah. hook off. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So no, I I don't really all those ones those SK skipping prawns. I um I tie them all open and put the treble on that way. The yes. new ones that I'm doing the dancing prawns they are always stinger hooks. Um, yeah. So I tie, I do actually close that um, shank up. Yeah, yeah. No, fair call. Yeah. I, think too, like, like, I think too, like the fish is pretty much going to be pulling against that most of the time, you know. So yeah. there isn't too many times where that's really going to bust out and come out that side. It's sort of yeah. got to go against, almost go against physics and pressure, I suppose, yeah. for that to happen. But. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Scotty Whitfield just put up a um a mess, uh, message. No rattles is the best. We've been fishing a lot of um a lot of brim and whiting up on the flats, and he's the person that I fish a lot with with conventional yeah. stuff, and he always steals yeah. all my fish. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he's he's finding that as soon as he puts a lure with a rattle on, yeah. um, he's not getting as better reaction, and that's. So I learn a lot from Scott when I fish with him. He's a very good lure fisherman. Yeah, um, yeah. 
So I use the information I'm seeing what he's doing and then turn it into what I need to do as a fly fisherman and what yeah, I need exactly. to represent fly in doing. So I'm learning a lot. It's not, yeah, yeah. So I do like fishing with spin fish shows anyway. Yeah, <laughs> Keep it natural, brother. <laughs> <laughs> And can this um have you got this fly up on your YouTube channel, Shem? Yeah, I do. I do have the yeah. skipping project online. So okay. if anyone wants to look, I've got a few up there and you got uh, Brett was up on, on it as well. So just extreme fly on YouTube. Yeah. Um, but if anyone's ever ever got any questions, always ask Brett before me, but I'm always there <laughs> as well. Cause then I'll ask Shem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nah, it's all good. Yeah, you can ask away, shoot me a DM or whatever. It's fine. I'm happy to answer them, so it's all good. Mm. Yeah. Any other questions out there, guys? I think that seems pretty good. I reckon that's almost it, mate. Mm. Thanks, mate, Shan. Mate, mm. thanks for having me on. No, it's, it's been great. And it's, it's a pleasure um, having you, man. Really mm. appreciate it, eh? All good. Hopefully, there'll be some more. Yeah, there will be for sure. The Mezzi. Yeah. Wait yeah, for the that Mezzi. one. The Mesmerizer. Yeah, the Mezzi. Next week? No, no, not even. Oh, no. Anyway, <laughs> soon. Soon. All right, mate. All right. All right. See you, Shane. See you, bye. Guys. Appreciate See you, it. Shane. I'll talk to you soon, mate. All right. Removing Shan. <laughs> gone. Poof. There we go. We've evicted Shan. He's gone. Um, hopefully, you got a lot out of that one, guys. The quick step-by-step. Step. We'll try and get this one up onto the YouTube um, video, uh, onto the YouTube channel as well. Uh, if you've got any questions, you can, um, as Shannon said, you can find them away to me. We will try and get a kit up for this fly in both colours, all right? Um, I just need to confirm availability of some bits and bobs. So it might be, it's not up there now. I've started to prepare it. I need to um, get some gear in before I can put it up. But we'll do it in a, you know, get one, tie five, uh two colours available in the one pack sort of thing, somewhere there. It'll probably be up hopefully tomorrow afternoon. Uh, if not, it'll be sometime during the week, all right? But uh, more importantly, thanks very much for stopping by tonight. Really appreciate it. We will be back Sunday, <laughs> all right? 7.30 p.m. I'm not sure what I'm tying yet. Um, whether we'll have another guest on, I don't know, but you never know. This that'd, only, be, this that'd only, be cool. This only happened today. <laughs> um, but there'll be something. We'll put it out on Sunday at some at some point in time. Join us at 7.30 next week. Uh, thanks for all of the fly photos that have come through. Cherise, poppers, shrimps. They're everywhere. I love it. I love seeing it, you know. So hopefully you're learning something from this. I'm enjoying bringing it to you. Um, and we're gonna, we've got a whole list now of requests, deceivers, bombers, gotchas, um, clouds, you, you name it. Spoons. Spoons, <laughs> crabs, they're, they're all there. Yeah. So we'll work our way through it. But I've said it before, we're trying to build a little bit of a story. So, you know, the next one after this is probably the disco, to tell you the truth, unless I can think of something in between of this and the disco. But thanks very much. Appreciate it. Enjoy your public holiday Monday. Stay safe. <laughs> See you next Sunday. See you guys. See you guys. Bye.